Good morning, everyone, and welcome to CRST class. So, I hope this class um, would be fun here. So, it's a little bit of change. So, it's kind of a little um, weird for all of us, but I'll try my best to make it um, enjoyable and fun. So like always, we are going to start with um, some scripture reading. So today we are going to read in Matthew 5, verses 38 to 39. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But now I tell you, do not take revenge on someone who wrongs you. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, let him slap your left cheek too. Now the message of these two verses is what Jesus is saying here is that God does not encourage revenge. God does not like us to take revenge from the people who ever did bad to us or who do bad to us on a daily basis. God wants his children to be humble and not doing bad for bad. I know it has become a fashion today to take revenge. And I think it shows power in today's context, in today's culture. People label it as your power. Like if you are able to take good revenge, people say, oh, you know, here, He's the man, he's the real man, you know, and he's the real woman because, you know, look how she took revenge. This is how you got to teach someone revenge. So this has somehow become a fashion and a very cool thing in the culture of the world to take revenge and do bad for bad, even do much bad in response to someone's bad or wrong to you. Well, it might be um, something cool in the world, but it's really not cool in God's eyes. God does not encourage revenge. He does not want you to take revenge from people. He wants you to be humble, and if people are doing bad to you, let them do. Well, why? Why God wants us to do this? Why He wants us to bear wrongs that people do to us is simply in the light of this verse these verses simply God wants us to be humble and forgiving he wants us to have a heart like Christ bearing bad behaviors and not doing bad in return it's having that simple pure humble heart that you're ready to forgive people and so humble that if people are doing bad to you you don't do bad to them so as I give you a task for every week so task for this week is that look into yourself and see if you are quick to take revenge and if you are then what do you choose to do now after hearing from Matthew chapter 5 verses 38 to 39 after hearing what God says to you about taking revenge and seeing what Jesus is saying here now what do you decide to do do you decide to um, are you okay with like taking revenge from people when they do bad to you or you want to be um, walking on God's path and keep a humble heart inside you and be ready to forgive people and not to take revenge so let's close your eyes and let's pray and then we'll start today's lecture Father in heaven I thank you for um, this beautiful day for the beautiful wind, sunlight, for everything beautiful that you're doing that is beyond our understanding. Things that you're doing, things that we 
don't say we, we are not able to comprehend, but you are doing. Thank you for keeping perfect balance in the universe. Thank you for taking care of our houses, our families, our bodies and our souls and our minds every day. Thank you for doing all the great things you do for us on a daily basis. Father, I pray for all the political situations in the country that you may bring peace in this country and in people's hearts and minds so that everything runs smoothly without chaos. I give my country into your hands, Father. I pray for my students that they may have a wonderful day today and a wonderful weekend ahead. I commit this whole time into your hand. Please run this class very smoothly. In Christ Jesus' name I ask. Amen. All right, so let's start our lecture. Of course, this is really not going to be a long lecture as we would be doing in the class because we have a flip, um, flipped mode of like classroom environment. But of course, you guys are not here, so we are not going to do any kind of group activities. So the lecture is going to be very short. Um, but of course, it's going to be productive. So quickly, um, we saw in the first um, act, Act 1, and how the story of the Bible began. So the, we, we saw that the story of the Bible began with everything good. So we saw when God created everything, everything was in a perfect harmony. Everything was beautiful. Everything was good. Everything was peaceful. That is how the story of the world or a story of the Bible begins. And in Act 2, as the story moves forward, we witnessed and we saw that a change took place when things went wrong. So in Act 1, everything was beautiful, creation was all good. In Act 2, story moves forward and we saw things went wrong wrong. Now this is um, on my screen you see um, review of Act 2. So point one was that I'm just quickly going to review this is all that we have discussed in the um, last lecture. So here is a quick review of Act 2. Number one, as the story uh, moved forward and we saw certain things happening in Act 2. So number one, harmony in the creation order was ruptured. Relationship between God and humanity cracked. Suffering entered the world. Sin entered the world. Death entered the world. Nothing remained good. Well, I just want to make a quick correction in point one. Harmony in the creation order. It's not ordered, but order. So harmony in the creation order was ruptured. So we saw why all these six points took place. Why harmony in the creation order was ruptured. Why relationship between God and humanity cracked. Why suffering entered the world. Why sin entered the world. Why death entered the world and why nothing remained good as it was in the beginning when creation was created and everything was good. Why nothing remained good? So we saw that it all happened because of what Adam and Eve did. So Adam and Eve committed sin. They disobeyed God. They committed the sin of disobedience. And because of that, everything was messed up. And nothing remained as it was originally created. And then we saw all these bad consequences where harmony in creation order was ruptured, where relationship between God and humanity cracked, where suffering entered the world. You know, when God punished Eve, that she will... 
bear children with much pain and she would remain under the control of her husband. And we saw when God told Adam, cursed him, that he would work hard. He would toil, right? And after doing all that hard work, he will make arrangements for him. And this is how actually he will earn his living. He will he will arrange and make possible for him to eat after doing all that hard work, after doing all that toil. So the curse is um, God cursed Eve with and the curse is that God cursed Adam with whether bearing children with pain or whether living under the captivity of husband or whether toiling and working hard to earn bread this all symbolizes suffering so this is how we concluded that suffering entered the world and we saw that God said to Adam that you are dust and you will return to dust. Here we saw the idea of death, that death entered the world. So in the end, we saw that suffering entered the world, disobedience entered the world, sin entered the world, death entered the world. And we concluded that nothing remained good. So everything was messed up. This is how Act 2 ended. So today we are going to start with Act 3, Israel. So remember, you need to keep track of the story. So the story began with Act 1, creation, when everything was good. Act 2 was fall, when nothing remained good. Now we are in Act 3 and the story moves forward and we see this Israel, some nation stepping in. So today we will see that what is um, Act 3 about and how it relates to Act 2 and Act 1 and together how Act 1, 2 and 3 take the story forward. So Act 3 is about Israel and um, Act 3 is God chooses a people. So God chooses a nation. Now, um, God choosing a people and God choosing a nation, how does it all um, relate to Act 2 and how it relates to Act 1? And in the bigger picture, how does it fit um, in the story of the Bible? So let's explore that together. So I'm just going to read in Genesis 12, verses 1 to 3. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. Verse 2, I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. Verse 3. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. I just read... From Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3. So now um, here I want you to pay attention that God is talking to Abraham or Abraham and God is talking to him and God is promising him to make him into a great nation. God is promising Abraham that he is going to make of him a great nation that he's gonna bless him he's gonna make his name great and he is gonna make him a blessing to the world or for the world so this is God is talking to Abraham now why this is all important 
So it is important to note that God is talking to a certain man named Abraham and God is going to make him into a great nation, a nation for himself, for God himself. Now, the story of Abraham and his family takes up the rest of the Old Testament from Genesis, the first book of the Bible, from like Genesis 12 to Malachi. Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament. So now from Genesis 12 to the last book of Old Testament, the story of Abraham is, and his family takes up the rest of the story of the Bible till Old Testament. So this is why it is so important. So now let's know more about this nation. Um, so, well, this nation is called Israel. Now the first question is that why did God choose Israel? Why God like chose the certain man named Abraham and why God chose to um, make of him a great nation? Why was it such a great deal? Why would God do that? Why was it important to make a nation? So let's see, why did God choose Israel? Or why God choose to make Abraham into a great nation? So to answer this question, I will be reading from Exodus chapter 19, verses 4 to 6. You can't see on my screen. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself now therefore if you obey my voice and keep my covenant you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples indeed the whole earth is mine but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. Now here, God is talking. And he's saying, what? Pay attention to verse 6. He's saying, you shall be for me a priestly kingdom. And a holy nation. God is saying these words for Israelites. That they will be a priestly kingdom. And a holy nation for God. These are the words that God spoke for Israelites. So, in, light, in the light of verse 6. How would we answer this question? Why did God choose Israel? Or why did God choose Israelites? God chose Israelites to be a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. That was the purpose why God chose Israelites. God chose Israelites to be a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. That was the function of the Israelites. That, that was why God chose this nation. He chose Israelites to be a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. Now, the follow-up question would be, okay, now we understand why God chose Israelites, right? So he chose Israelites. Israelites to be a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. Now the question is, why did God choose the Israelites to be a priestly kingdom and a holy nation? That means, what was the need? Why would God do that? I mean, why would he um, choose the Israelites to be a priestly kingdom and a holy nation? What was the need? Why God would need to um, choose Israelites to play a role as a priestly kingdom and a holy nation for the world. Why? 
So here is the answer. Why was it important for God to choose the Israelites to be a priestly kingdom and a holy nation? So the first answer, I mean, this is the answer, and I, then um, the further points you see on my screen are kind of the sub-points to this main idea. So God chose the Israelites to be a priestly kingdom and a holy nation because of what happened in Act 2, Fall. Right, sorry, I had to take a um, pause because of Azan, so I'm just going to say it again. So why did God choose the Israelites to be a priestly kingdom and a holy nation? So the answer is because of what happened in Act 2, Fall. So in Act 2, we saw that Adam and Eve disobeyed God. We saw that Adam and Eve committed the sin of disobedience. And we saw that how sin entered the world. Now, sin entered the world and to sin became a part of human nature. This means that Adam and Eve committed the sin of disobedience. They disobeyed God and this is how sin entered the world. Now, when sin entered the world because of Eve and Adam, because of this, because of Adam and Eve's sin, two sin became a part of human nature. That means that all the humans were born rebellious to God. Now see, Adam and Eve were the first humans, right? So when they committed the sin of disobedience and they disobeyed God and they show rebellion against God, now when they give birth to generations, right? So of course the humanity started with them. Now the sin which was in Adam and Eve was transferred to all humans. It was like inherited to all the humans. And this is how the sin passed on from generations to generations to generations. And this is how we would say that because it was inherited um, from Adam and Eve, that's how to sin became a part of human nature. That means all the humans were born rebellious to God. So starting from Adam and Eve, and all the later humans who were born, they were all born in rebellion against God. By nature, humans were rebellious, rebellious um, against God. They were disobeying God and they would sin, they would not listen to God, they would be rebellious to God. Now, and that was all natural to them. It was because sin that was committed by Adam and Eve was transferring or was transmitted to other humans. Now, God needed some solution for it. And of course, God did not want humans to be rebellious to him. And he wanted some kind of solution to this, to this problem of rebellion. So God chose a nation that would demonstrate obedience to God to the world. And this nation would be priests for the world. Like, you know how priests in today's context, what, what, what do priests do? It's like priests preach to us, teach to us, they show us the right path. They, um, encourage us, they guide us, they teach us to walk on God's path. They guide us to follow God, right? To be obedient to God. So that was the function, that was the role that God gave to this nation, Israel. God gave them a task. And what was the task? Demonstrate obedience to God. God chose this one nation called Israel, and God gave them this specific role 
to demonstrate obedience to God. God expected of Israel to listen to him, to follow him and to obey him and to do whatever God would ask them to do. And their role was to listen to God, obey God, and by doing so, demonstrate to the world, hey people, you know, this is how it looks like to follow God and to obey God. And this is how it looks like to um, practice obedience towards God. So the, the, the role and the function of Israelites was very simple. It was just one function. It was just one task. It was just one role. And that role was to demonstrate obedience to God. Because I just said that humans were born rebellious by nature. So by human nature, all humans in the world were sinners, were rebellious against God. It was in their nature. That was because what Adam and Eve did. Because of them, sin entered the world and it became a part of very human nature. And now every human in the world was born with sinful nature, was born rebellious against God. And now God wanted this nation, Israel, whom he chose to practice obedience towards God and show it to the world how it looks like to be obedient to God. And this is how, you know, you would be obedient to God. And through this nation, God wanted to show to the world how to be obedient to God. So let's put it simple. The job God gave to Israelites was this. Show to the world how to obey God. Show to the world what it looks like to obey God. Help people to obey God by demonstrating obedience toward God. That means Israelites were called to obey God by doing all that God would ask them to do. That was the function. That was the role of the Israelites. And that, that's why God chose this nation, Israelites. Now, the question is, did Israel accomplish the mission? Now, I just mentioned that God chose Israelites to demonstrate obedience to God, to the world. God wanted Israelites to demonstrate to the world what it looks like to obey God and to guide the world how to obey God by themselves obeying God. But the question is, did Israel accomplish the mission? Well, I would like to stop this lecture here because I want you to answer this question for me in the next class. So you would bring answer to this question, did Israel accomplish the mission God gave them? Did Israel accomplish the mission for why God chose them? And here is the passage that would help you to figure out the answer. So did Israel accomplish the mission God gave them? So in order to answer this question, you would read 2 Chronicles chapter 36, verses 11 to 23. So did Israel accomplish the mission? So the answer is right there in 2 Chronicles chapter 36, Verses 11 to 23. So what you need to do is read this passage. And there you will get the answer. Whether Israel accomplished the mission or not. I want you to bring your answers in the next class. I want you to really um, make note that why did God punish Israel and how did God punish Israel and the third question would be did Israel accomplish the mission God gave them remember the mission was to demonstrate obedience 
to God, to the world, right? Their job, their mission was to demonstrate to the world how to obey God. That was their mission. God chose Israelites to show to the world how to obey God. That was their priestly role. And God called them to live as a holy nation means obeying everything that God would say. And that is how God expected of them to show to the world how to obey him. That was the mission. So did Israel accomplish this mission? So bring your answers, um, bring your answers in the next class and um, just read Second Chronicles 36, 11 to 23. Um, have a blessed weekend. I hope you enjoyed the lecture. So see you guys in the next class. Stay blessed. Bye.